Today we're going to be exploring the remains of the magnificent Palace of Domitian on the Palatine Hill. Hey, this is Darius for Ancient Rome Live, and we are going to visit the Palace of Domitian. It's on the Palatine Hill, and it is the definitive residence of the Emperor on the Palatine Hill. Right now I'm standing outside. We're going to take a tour inside and get a sense of the incredible architecture and the enormous spaces. And of course, this is something that's built on layers. So we'll make our way through the palace that's built at one time by the Emperor Domitian. And he's the emperor that succeeds his brother Titus. He's the emperor from 81 into 96. And what happens in 96? He's assassinated in this very residence. And again, it's the residence that gives us the word palace and palatial. It is the residence of Domitian on the Palatine Hill, and it becomes known as Palatium, the entire hill indebted to this grand construction. Let's explore the palace of Domitian. We're starting out outside the palace of Domitian, behind the so-called House of Livia and the ruins of Apollo Palatinus. Everything we see here is the Palace of Domitian, and we're walking inside. This is going to date to the reign of Domitian, 81 to 96. And we'll see some remains as we make our way through here of some of the once great decoration. It's going to be a lot of marble, and of course, there are going to be a lot of fantastic curved spaces. We know who the architect is. It's Rabirius. That much we know. We don't know anything else, but we know that the mission commissioned one heck of a, an architect. And what he's left behind, this legacy, is very important for us because when we think of the residence of the emperor, and we think of this term palatium, it's the residence referring specifically to this palace of the emperors. And there are many other structures here beforehand, right? We have the house of Augustus, we have the Domus Tibidiana, which we've shown you in videos. We have underneath here the Domus Transitoria, sometimes open to the public. And then finally, we have the Domus Aurea. And we will be able to see some of the remains of those earlier structures as we walk along here. For example, we're in the triclinium area of the Palace of Domitian. But down below here, we can actually see some beautiful marble remains that are going to be attributed these days to Augustus or to the Domus Transitoria of Nero. And plopped on top is this little structure, which is a construction of the Farnese family when they have their wonderful Renaissance gardens on top of the remains. You can actually see then where the ground level is and how much has been excavated out to reveal at sometimes the well-preserved ruins of the Palace of Domitian. So we have a magnificent triclinium area and it's flanked on either side by, it looks like a boat, a boat fountain heavily restored by the excavators. But we can admire it and think that the people that are dining are looking through these windows that are looking from the vantage point of the triclinium, which had a heated floor. So let's take a look at that. So we're in the space of the triclinium of Domitian. It's one of the major massive structures. Think about the Curia in the Roman form. It's of that scale. You see some excavated ruins beneath from the Domus Transitoria. But these were heated floors. And we can see the hypocaust system in the distance. We look at the Palatine Museum over there. And what we're doing is we're pivoting over to the other major structures in the public sphere of the Palace of Domitian. So we're going from the triclinium space to the peristyle court, and we're going to head over to the 
palatial halls where the emperor would receive people. So walking away from the triclinium space or walking past the famous peristyle court, the octagonal fountain. So again, pivoting from the triclinium space past the magnificent octagonal fountain. We'll be walking in porticos. There's our entrance where we first entered. We can see some of the telltale signs of marble veneer with our marble plugs. And we're gonna see two main public venues. One is the so-called Basilica, straight ahead. And this is a large space, maybe for the accommodation of the, uh, the senatorial class. Senators would convene. Here is a remains of a subterranean passageway. So we got to think about this palace being honeycombed. And beyond the so-called basilica space, we see the apse of that basilica space, and we see one portion of a huge wall. We pass to the ultimate space in the public area of the palace, which is this very large spanning hall. It's the Aula Regia with an apse. And here the emperor would sit and greet people. And right here is a famous inscription talking about the two colossal statues that were discovered that are now in Parma that depict Hercules and Bacchus, but they were once found here. Imagine being the emperor seated right here and receiving people over the centuries. And you can see those colossal statues in the Darius Aria YouTube channel for some perspective on how magnificent they were, but they're in the Parma Museum because that's where the Farnese family took those particular uh, works of art. So here we put it together then basically a gargantuan scale of what the Roman house would be or in the atrium space essentially receiving people as people would receive in their domus spaces in Rome or Pompeii or wherever a peristyle court and the triclinium hall and this really is the public area of the palace of the emperor We're passing going past the uh, triclinium area, and now we're in another section. And this is actually pretty cool because we're gonna see that the ground level is gonna drop substantially. And these are, giving us opportunity to admire, really, the extraordinary amount of uh, engineering here. We actually have light wells, and also have at their base fountains. So magnificent, magnificent experience on multiple levels. That's what we have to really think of when we go to the Palace of Domitian. Again, light wells providing light and reflecting pools. The people that are down below. Finally, even water because they're going to install water in one of the ancient fountains. We're getting more of that experience now, like you get with your experience in the Villa of Hadrian. Actually, I love it like this because there's no music. Sometimes there's actually going to be music, but this is quite the view, quite the lovely setting. A fountain down there, fountain here as well. And we're going to make our way all the way to the Circus Maximus. And of course you'd have a stunning view from the Palatine Palace. You're on view and you're enjoying the view. And we see the imprint left from the Circus Maximus in the distance and down below we even see some structures that we know some of which are slave schools. Look at this 
incredible facade. And then belongs all to the building as far as I can see in the time of Domitian. And we can also see right here in this section, we have a kind of uh, isolated dining room area surrounded by a moat. So it's just parallel with the main atrium hall. But recently they've done quite a lot of uh, restoration of the pavement and left it on view, like this gorgeous Africano marble pavement. Very stunning. And of course, make our way ultimately to the so-called stadium space, which is yet another sunken garden area, which we can admire the expanse of the Palace of the Empress. There's that big apsed area, which is going to be for dining. Truly amazing because you have so many layers and levels of the palace still visible to us. We think this is a veridarium or a garden space. Maybe a place also to ride a horse. And here we have all that restored pavement. So as we walk through on the top, it's almost all interior spaces. Now passing on to another area where we can conclude this is the area that was once the Vigna Barberini. And one of our great, great structures was the Temple of Jupiter, famously notoriously used by our buddy Elagabalus right here. Magnificent foundations. We can take it back in time. A domus in the time of Augustus that's destroyed in a landslide. And then extensions of the Palace of Domitian that we've been visiting. This area is so well preserved because eventually becomes a temple sanctuary that's then used as the uh, area for the vineyards of the Barberini family. And everything that we saw previously, the main core of the Palace of Domitian became covered over in debris and was used as the secret garden of the Farnese family. But what a magnificent view that we have today of the Colosseum. Hey guys, Darius for Ancient Rome Live. Thanks for joining me for this walk. Take, be sure that you take a look at our courses. Be sure you take a look at our online course. Join us in Rome, join us throughout the Mediterranean. And of course, we give two free lectures every month and a masterclass as well. We'd love to see you online. We'd love to see you in person. And of course, in Rome, but also throughout the Mediterranean. Ancient Rome Live thanks CAAS Mashantoni Award for making this video possible.